But my, I was drawn to the, uh, an element of the, the uncanny, which I guess was tied specifically to post-colonial disciplines. And that's something that perhaps uh, I should have mentioned earlier was also a, a factor in my curating of uh, that exhibition, The Unknown, that, that uh, showed of historical material. So this element of uh, colonial discourse enters the picture when we consider uh, a sense of Englishness, uh, if you like, or a sense of um, uh, pastoralism that uh, affects especially, say, a city like uh, Christchurch or perhaps Adelaide, although they haven't been Adelaide, in its uh, framing and uh, its striving for a, uh, a making familiar for Pākehā, for settler culture, by building something on the harakiki or the, the swamp, uh, you, you know what I mean. So, uh, and, and Freud speaks quite uh, literally of, uh, you know, the uncanny is that which is, is best kept secret, that which is best kept repressed uh, to some extent. And, and I think that through the series, albeit calling on this, uh, uh, this, this kind of aesthetic from the 1950s, although it's a slightly more snapshot manner, uh, there's moments of, of extreme violence, you know, in uh, an image like this, for example, which is, was taken at the uh, Crime Museum in Sydney, uh, which depicts uh, heads, uh, much like a, a criminal identified from the 1930s, become generic decapitated heads. You know, what, how much identification is, is evident in these, in these features? What, do, what else do they become? They become, of course, an, an allegorical symbolic realm, uh, these uh, vinyl motifs. So I think that's probably true to, to my interest in, in the uncanny and, and my perhaps uh, contribution to it at a visual level uh, is that, that frame that the post-colonial uncanny. Is that an address request for well, you speak about a seriality here, but you're also very conscious in establishing a polarity in a coupling of the images. Uh, what's your thinking behind that? Uh, at, a, at a base level, it's... it's is it intuitive it's, or is it a pretty program? Uh, it, it's both. It's, it, that which works visually. And again, coming back to, you know, to filming, um, or, or how we, our eyes operate, if you like. You know, I, can look, I can look over here, <coughs> To these photographs and then I can blink and look at my hand and that, that blinking, it's a quote, uh, wall emerges in, in the blink of an eye. Mm. It's an edit, it's a cut. So that is literally what we're seeing here, all being laid out in, in, a, in a linear or deconstructed manner. So it needs to work both visually, what have objects that's next to each other, but also in relationship to um, a narrative. Um, but this is the first time that the full set's been seen outside New Zealand, so it's, it's also wonderful. And I don't think I have to thank the installation team, but this is a remarkable feat. How did you manage to squeeze these works in precisely on this wall? <laughs> so, did you move the you built the walls to fit your work. Wow, it's, <laughs> it's absolutely magical. It's never been around three walls, and I don't know if it ever will again. So coming back to this line of, of the post-colonial Gothic novel, what, what was your question? <laughs> I just wondered how the, I said that we tussled with the term gothic in terms of, you know, the title of the show being unnerved and uh, tussled about the implications of using such a term and maybe that's, I mentioned that you were laughing because I thought, well, maybe exactly that, that when you wrote that it had a different meaning for you than it does now, but at the time what were you thinking in terms of mentioning and particularly putting post-colonial as well, so they're very loaded ideas in that one sentence. Right. Uh, I don't think my position's changed much. Um, I love the works of Alison McLean. I think she's our greatest filmmaker. And I hate the films of Jane Campion. And I'm so glad you used that title of, of Gothic uh, in, in the title because I think that, that sense of Gothic melodrama is something that I very much uh, have grown to despise with regards to um, this idea of, uh, uh, of packaging uh, a Gothic. Um, I came up with another catchphrase, uh, which I also think has been used um, with regards to my work, and this is perhaps very evident in the other work in the gallery, the Empire piece uh, from, 19, uh, from 2007, Empire Beach. 
I'm interested in a pop gothic. Uh, I'm interested in a pop gothic because they're, they're supposedly at, at other extremes. And um, I, I guess in this, there is those elements of, of pop, or at least I hope there is, in, in terms of some degree of, of absurdity, um, or some degree of um, my homage to the Helene Mitchell idea, and like some degree of some knowingness of um, absurdity, or with, you know, camp creepiness. You know, the, the hoods over there are only slightly creepy. They're not, uh, hopefully, as melodramatic as, as, um, as I mentioned. Um, you know, I mean, Jane Campion, of course, she's a wonderful filmmaker, and I respect her deeply for all of those things, but I'm far more interested in the stories that Alex and McLean bring to, to uh, New Zealand cinema. Mm -hmm. So I, I would rather align myself to that. You know, there's, there's stories that go like this, and there's stories that, that go like that, and um, this one's kind of my, my life and my day.